In this presentation, we're going to look at conditional breakpoints in WinDebug. So, conditional breakpoint we use normally to filter out the unnecessary breaks of all the breakpoint variants like BP, PM, BU, PA, etc. A small program or a script is given with the breakpoint command which decides to break or not. We're going to see this shortly in a demo. So we can use the program or the script or the debugger command instead of breaking into the debugger we can just print the stack at that point of break and then we can do a go. When we go from a debug break normally we use a GC go from a conditional breakpoint rather than G as GC has some pros over G when it comes to conditional breakpoint. If you'd like to know more details, please refer to the debugger documentation. So this is an example of a conditional breakpoint. So this is a BP. So you can use BA, BU, BM or any variant. BP then the function address where to break and this is the condition. Now let's try to understand the condition. So if then we have an else. So this is pretty much like the C syntax. If this condition is evaluating to true, do nothing but break. So this is a break. Else do a GC. So what basically happens here is we are telling the debugger what to do when a breakpoint is hit on this particular function address. So once again this particular condition will get evaluated each time the breakpoint is hit on this particular function address. In this particular case, if this if condition is evaluating to true, do nothing, which means that it just break. Other ways, don't break. Now let's try to understand the condition. So condition is this particular variable, the value of this particular variable is greater than 1500, then do a break. So if test var is greater than 1500, break. Otherwise, no break. So that is what this particular conditional breakpoint does. Now, let's see a demo to further clarify. So I have this hello world application here and I have a function my test fund here I have a global variable test VAR which is initialized to 1000 which means that the current value of test VAR is 1000 now I have executed the exact same breakpoint we have seen in the presentation now what we are expecting here is here we are calling this particular function which is this hello world bang my test one but we are giving a condition that only if this variables value is greater than 1500 we should break so that is what is happening here so this poi is for taking the value inside that address. So initially that condition evaluate to false which means that this is going to be false and we're gonna go to the else condition and execute GC instead of coming here. So we are not going to break here but after that we are changing 
test VAR to 2000 and because 2000 is greater than 1500 we gonna break here now let's see that so now we got a break right here initially hello world test VAR was 1000 now let's check the value now as you can see it is 2000 which means that we have executed this particular statement and the break we have obtained is right here let's see the KM for that so if you click on to that particular frame we can see that it is broken here and not here restarted the application once again in this case what I'm going to do is before GC I'm going to print the call stack in the first case it is gonna go here and it is gonna print the stack and not going to break it is going to break in the second execution of this particular function so the only change is I have added a K to print the stack so as you can see here the stack got printed and in the second break I have broken into the debugger just like before now if you look at the stack you will understand that it is at line number 19 so this break happened at line number 19 so when that happened we did a K and then a GC so in fact we were looking at a fairly simple conditional breakpoint conditional breakpoint can be a little bit more complicated as well let's see this example so BP just like before then the function to break and then in quotes the double quotes we have the command just like before but in this case we don't have the if else but what we have is a file name c colon slash command dot txt so this is a syntax for giving a file name and this is the content of that particular file so it is almost a small program which has two if else conditions so what this breakpoint is doing is it is a breaking into this particular function if the fourth parameter of the function which is supposed to be a string and that string is not starting with global if it is starting with global it is going to do a GC if it is not starting with global it is going to print the name of that particular event name which is the fourth parameter and it is going to break because we don't have a GC here so there are a couple of things we have not discussed which is there in the script one is something called alias so the first if else condition is setting up an alias depending on the fourth parameter which is in the register R9 so this is specific to 64-bit calling convention in which the first four parameters are passed in RCX, RDX, R8 and R9 I'm not going into the details of that the point I'm trying to drive here is 
condition for a conditional breakpoint is not always simple and straightforward. Another challenge you may face here is if you have some problem in this particular script it is very difficult to debug. So my recommendation is try avoid complicated conditions. So these scripts are more or less difficult to debug. They are slow because they are executed each time when the breakpoint is hit to evaluate whether to break or not and unlike a C sharp or Java application you may not find sample for a particular case in which you wanted to find or put breakpoint for so what is the alternative here so this is my personal recommendation it may not work in all the scenarios but it may cover up at least 95 percent of the cases in which you wanted to put a complicated conditional breakpoint it is a very simple approach no complication at all for each hit of the breakpoint just print everything you need if you need the parameter just print it out using the decide command like a du da dc whatever you are looking for or the stack and save that debugger output to a file and use something like grep or just using Visual Studio you can search I always use Visual Studio to search inside that particular text file let me give you a recent example from my own experience so this was from a colleague of mine who was a malware research engineer his requirement was rather complicated he wanted to break into this particular function nt io get dma adapter if in the call stack he will see an unknown binary so he don't know the name of the binary or he has symbol for it so that binary is a hidden binary it could not even be a binary it can be some code which is getting executed from some pool for example because he was suspecting that particular binary is a kernel driver malware and he was trying to reverse engineer that malware so giving a conditional breakpoint while not impossible it is very difficult in this particular scenario he had some suspicious address changes in which that binary or the code could have existed so as I mentioned it would be nice to have a conditional breakpoint to get this break but it is practically impossible in the given time frame so what I recommended is just put a breakpoint in IO get DMA adapter and whenever the breakpoint is hit just print the output of k command so that he will get the call stack save it into a file just like I mentioned before and search for the first few nibbles of this address so that the output has this particular address range anywhere in the vicinity a return address caller anywhere and that worked very well so there are a couple of other ways as well to filter the breaks like the condition so you can give a number of hits you want after that the breakpoint will get disabled in kernel mod you can give the e process address we are ready to discuss any of these things you can specify the process context using slash p so the break happens only in that process context if that function break into any other process context we don't get a break another similar approach is giving the thread context 
using e thread structure so this is kernel mod specific as I mentioned another way to filter is slash c small c is for max call stack depth so if the call stack depth is beyond this you may not get a break say for example you are troubleshooting a, a recursive function you can use this similarly you have min stack depth so feel free to explore all this filtering possibilities to fine-tune the breaks so we have seen conditional breakpoints we have seen a demo of if else condition then we have seen a complicated conditional breakpoint as an alternative we have discussed searching inside the complete output or the non-filtered output of a breakpoint we have seen also some other ways like slash p slash t slash c capital small etc are some other ways to filter the number of breaks that's it thank you very much